Oh, look at that, white peach. You knew. Testing, testing. It's Alex Kinsani. I'm here talking with models.com. I like really started actually modeling when I was like, I want to say 12 or 11 or 12. Um, I was at a summer camp and it was like a trans only summer camp and it was a really like eye opening experience because a lot of the people there had like either found success in fashion or were interested in fashion. It was really nice at the time because I got to hear experiences from people who were older and had been doing it since like the 80s and 90s and I think that that, that wisdom that I got from them really allowed me to be the person that I am today and be confident and like I guess root me and remind me always like kind of why I'm doing it. The Tom Ford show was an amazing experience and I was working with Kareen Rockfield which I hadn't I hadn't like worked with her before. After that show I I did Versace the next season. I had I think two days that I could miss in school and at that point I was like we choose Versace. We choose Versace. I decided that school is always gonna be there and the work that I had, the opportunities that I had were something that I really wanted to pursue. And I had my first music video really before I even started modeling. It was with um, King Princess. And that video was so much fun. Like I hadn't been on a set like that where I was really able to like be myself. It's almost the same way that like an actress kind of is able to portray her own personality or their own personality. And I mean over time I did the Mugler show with JT and we kind of connected and we became friends and she asked me to do the video and that was Obviously, I'm a big fan of her. I love the City Girls, I love her. As amazing as modeling is, I feel like there's definitely a box that you can be put in as a model where it's kind of expected that you can only perform one thing or do one thing or, I guess, be one-sided. And I don't know a single model that's one-sided. All of these girls are crazy. So I think it's nice to kind of show the personality and the depth that people have. Well, what really connects me to the runway, I think, is just the real creativity that goes into it. Like, I've had the privilege of like working with designers and people that I've got to know on a more personal level. And the real like effort and energy that goes into that is like, I don't think I see that in any other part of fashion. And I mean, it's also very like, it's very personal because you do have to kind of put on a persona in the same way an actress does. You kind of have to feel the clothes and figure out how to sell it and figure out, I guess, what works best when it comes to like walk, when it comes to like attitude, you know? And I think for me, it's really nice because I almost get to separate myself and my identity from what I'm doing and I get to really just feel the clothes, feel the runway, whatever. I think what really like got me my first cover with Pop, I was just with an amazing team. It really made me feel like I was working with them, like collaboratively, not as much working by them, if that makes sense. I mean, I think it's such a blessing to have the opportunity to do a cover. I mean, especially with the people I've worked with, like Ethan James Green and Mario Sorrenti. He is such an icon. I mean, I've, I've admired his work since I first learned about fashion. And the way he works is so, it's so unique and it's so amazing too, because I feel like it's, it's very good to vocalize when you appreciate something. And he is so vocal when he likes an image and like, I mean, hearing Mario Sorrenti scream, like, yes, like, girl, that gagged me, that gagged me a little bit. And I think it's, it's really, it's really cool to have moments like that because you really feel like you're going somewhere. There needs to be more of a search for different types of people. I think, for example, casting, you think about, you know, who is a model and like, oftentimes that is our already pre preconceived notions of what that means or what that is. But like, in my experience, there's so many people who are honestly so much better than I am at like modeling and fashion and whatever and they're not given the opportunities because their identity isn't digestible enough but I think just allowing these people to be in the spaces period is what needs to be done and not looking at things in terms of like what other people are doing. I think it's definitely important to have that conversation and remind, remind people the need to keep searching and not be too comfortable in I guess the type of people that you bring into a space like that and for me especially I think like the whole conversation about like abled body models. Like I know a lot of really, really, really talented disabled models who like aren't physically given the space. Like they can't even go across the country because they don't have any sort of accessible way to do that. But at the end of the day, there's so many ways to be inclusive. And I think if you're bringing in a type of person because you're trying to bring in a type of person, you're not gonna actually be inclusive. You really just need to like appreciate what they are, appreciate the person as a human being. And like when Jeremy Scott brought Aaron Rose to the runway, like that was such a beautiful moment. I think just giving people the opportunity to showcase their talent in a way like that 
it's so important and it brings people together in a way that isn't even about their identities. It's just about the art of fashion, which like, I feel like if you're in fashion, you have to have some sort of appreciation for it, so. Well, when I first started, I feel like social media really didn't play that much of a part, um, even though obviously like I started through Facebook. I think it was something that I really kind of figured out on my, on my own and like with my peers and my queers. Okay. It really allowed me to go into those spaces and not be too cautious about what I'm saying or who I'm talking to because I didn't know anything. And I feel like that is what at the beginning allowed me to be so like outwardly enthusiastic and excited and like, yeah, un, un, unconstrained because I, I was kind of just excited about the art. I love fashion. And yeah, but I can definitely say now like as social media has evolved and became a bigger part of, you know, the industry, I've definitely you know, tied the two together and I really enjoy, I really enjoy it too because it makes fashion more accessible in a way that I don't think it was in the past. Well, I mean, I started TikTok when I was in high school, before, like right at the beginning of COVID um, because it was a really nice way to meet people. And so I used it kind of just as, when they say social media girl, like I was on, I was social, I was social. For me, my goal of like getting into this industry was to have a voice that would be listened to and like where I could speak on the things that I believe in. As corny as it sounds, like I feel like that's definitely a motive for me and it will continue to be. The beauty of work for me is that I get to go to work and I get to go home and like, yes, I'm like definitely giving energy in both, but like I have the opportunity to be in my own when I'm at home. And that's because I started my career kind of separating myself from the work that I do. I think to have true allyship and true inclusivity, you need to look at things beyond inclusivity if that makes sense. There's not one like type of person that can embody clothing. You know, that's the beauty of fashion is that it's it's about figuring out what each individual person enjoys, what each individual person embodies. And I think that like when you constrain yourself in terms of like a sample size or in terms of like a digestible identity, it really blocks you from ever actually being an ally.